Hey there, Dr. Janine Krause here. Wanting to talk a little bit about insulin resistance. It's thrown out a lot, but a lot of folks are like, what is it? It's when your pancreas is making insulin to counter blood sugar, so glucose that's coming from carbs, that's coming from fruit, that's coming from eating sugar, even fake sugars. What happens is that sugar has to get carried to our cells to make energy, and insulin is what does that. But what happens is when we have lots of sugars being in the bloodstream and the insulin has to carry it to the cells over and over again, sometimes the cells just get tired of looking at that insulin. And so they become resistant to it, meaning eh, we're not going to let the insulin bind and we're not going to bring the glucose into the cells. So what happens? We have elevated blood sugar. The longer that blood sugar stays elevated, well, unfortunately, we store those carbs as fat. So what the heck is going on here? Well, in my theory, we tend to kind of, this all kind of starts with stress, right? We get nervous, we get upset, we start to stress eat, or we're too busy for making food. And so what ends up happening, we eat things that are a little more processed. It's easier to grab sometimes a bag of chips and, you know, some pretzels in a sandwich than it is to whip up a stir fry or, you know, make yourself a salad or something of that nature. So too many processed carbs combined with stress will put your blood sugar up. And so will stress on its own. That is such a bummer, but cortisol levels, when those go up, sugar goes up too. Now, gut microbiome, dysbiosis, issues with your digestive system can cause insulin resistance. Meaning if you have too much yeast growing in your gut, that can mess with your blood sugar levels. If you have a lot of non-beneficial bacteria that don't break down your food effectively, we could have some dysbiosis, but we could also have a lot of those simple sugars getting across into the bloodstream, but the proteins and things, fats things, we're not making it across because we're not breaking them down. Instead, they're just sitting in there in the gut fermenting and then we get some stinky gas. Good times. But the last, but one of the most important things here, being sedentary, not moving to burn off this glucose that's in the bloodstream. Well, if you're sitting around and you're not moving as much, your body doesn't have a need to take that blood sugar and do something with it. So how can you make your cells more susceptible and more excited about seeing insulin and glucose? Start moving more. Get up every hour, even if it's just a couple minutes and you just move around and dance a little bit, or maybe you're doing jumping jacks, whatever it may be, the more you move, the more that your cells are going to be more excited to see glucose because it refuels them. It helps them to create energy. Now you're not going to have that much of a tendency to store all that excess glucose as fat in the system and start annoying you. So that is insulin resistance in a nutshell and what is happening in terms of imbalances within the body. Next, I'm going to talk about what you can do to counter this. I already talked about exercise, so you know that's going to be in there, but there's some more things. So stay tuned for my next video on this.